Today we're going to be learning this concentric swirl free motion quilting. It's a really great all over texture that works with just about any quilt and it has a ton of different variations. So once you learn this basic motif then you will be able to mix and match the styles and variations and create dozens of different designs. So let's get started drawing this simple design. As always, there is a free downloadable draw along sheet for this design that shows the basic shapes and gives you a area where you can trace along the design and then continue. So you can develop that skill of filling in a space on your own with just a little bit of guidance. This is a free download on my website. There is a link in the description of the video or you can go to my website tinyorchardquilts.com and it will be right there. There are two basic shapes to this design and one of them is simply an overlapping circle. Think of a cluster of grapes or a pile of coins, something where all of the circles are about the same size and you can maybe see the entirety of one of them, but most of them are at least partially hidden behind one that is on top of it. This is the organizational structure, I guess, for this design. You're gonna be just drawing this with a little bit of fanciness and echoing around these circles, but this is the basic way that you're gonna be moving around your quilt, simply drawing overlapping circles to fill the entire area. Now we aren't just going to be drawing circles. We're gonna be drawing circles that have echoes around them. Now these echoes can be placed as far or as close together as you would like. So this spacing distance between these rings is going to be the density of your quilting. So in this sample, that space between these echo lines is anywhere from a quarter to probably an eighth of an inch in here. Some of these are really tight. If you want a less dense look, then you could space these lines an inch apart or two inches apart, however, far you want your eventual quilting to be. Fewer lines of quilting will be a cuddlier, softer, squishier quilt. Uh, denser quilting will be a little bit stiffer. This is not the most pliable sample in the world, but it does make the unquilted areas, like the center of my circles, puff out a little bit. So it will just add contrast to maybe another area of your quilt where maybe there's a feather coming through here that isn't quilted as densely and so your feather will pop out a little bit more. So we're going to take this idea of concentric rings and we're going to combine it with this overlapping circles idea and quilt that to create that overall texture. So let's take a look at our imaginary quilt corner here. Now it's always tempting to begin in the corner, to draw our little circles and build out from the corner. But oftentimes that is going to create this overlapping design that feels a little bit more like fish scales than it does an overall design like this one, where the circles are all coming and growing from different directions. To avoid this fish scale look, which I don't know, it's kind of cool. Maybe you're into that and maybe that's the look you're going for, but it's not the design we're doing today. We're gonna begin down the edge of our quilt just a little bit. This could be a couple of inches, it could be a foot, however far down you want to begin. And we're gonna begin by creating our first partial circle. We are gonna stitch down along the side of our quilt and echo that circle. Just stitch about whatever distance. I stitched my sample about a quarter of an inch, so let's say this is a quarter of an inch. And you're gonna keep a quarter of an inch away, all the way around, tracing that circle. And you're gonna stitch until you hit the edge of your quilt. And then you're gonna repeat that. You're gonna stitch along the edge of your quilt until you're a quarter of an inch away from your previous line and then you're going to echo it again until you hit the edge of your quilt. And you can do this any number of times. I find that after I get to a certain number of echoes, my shape starts to flatten a little bit. And I think that that is probably 
just my habit. Most of these that are a little bit bigger, the tops here have started to flatten a little bit. So I try to keep my number of repeats of echoes somewhere in the five, four to six range. After I get out there a little bit, my shapes start to get le uh, less consistent. So my smaller ones are definitely are a little bit rounder. Once you have a couple of repeats, then it is time to start your second circle. So our needle right now is right here. And we don't want to start a circle like this because we're going to end up with that fish scale effect. What we want to do is stitch along that last echo. Just copying right along our stitch line until we move away from the edge a little bit. And then we're going to start our next circle. This could be a half of a circle. It could be just a little peak of a circle. It could be most of a circle. You get to determine how much of the circle is peeking out. You can either keep that consistent or you can shake it up. In my sample here, most of them are showing about half. Some are a little bit more emerged than others, but you can shake this up or you can try to keep all of your circles about the same amount showing from behind the previous one. And you're gonna stitch until you hit either the edge of your quilt or a previously stitched line. Once you do, you're gonna stop, travel along that line until you're a quarter of an inch away, and then echo your previous line. And you are going to repeat that until you have as many echoes as you like. And then you have a choice to make. We are right here. We can either stitch along the pink, the first concentric swirl that we made, or we could backtrack along the orange one, or we could stitch another orange echo and end up back over here so that we can fill this area in. There's no wrong answers here. I would probably stitch around and end up over here so that I can fill this area in before I move on and finish quilting my entire quilt. I don't wanna leave little empty areas. I might forget that it's there or it's just gonna be something else to do when I feel like I'm done with the quilt. So I'm going to echo around and fill this area in. So my next circle will start maybe right here. Now I don't have a lot of space here. I don't have room for a full arc because the edge of my quilt is here. So I'm going to pretend that that shape exists and I'm gonna start stitching that echo until I run into a stitched line or the edge of my quilt. And I'm gonna just fake it like it extends off the edge of my quilt when in reality I don't have room. And then I can do the same thing. I stitch this little partial line and then I can travel back around my quilt and finish it all the way over here. And then I can continue my design. I'm gonna stitch down a ways and then make my next circle and echo it. And I'm echoing until I hit a stitched line or the edge of my quilt. And that is all that there is to this design. So let's take a look at how this is quilted. I have my little mini quilt sandwich here and I'm gonna be quilting with black thread so that you guys can see it easily. I'm gonna start about halfway down the edge here. And if you are concerned about being able to make nice round circles to start, there are these little templates. Um, this came in a pack of a bunch of different shapes and I am going to use that just to give myself something nice and round to start with. Let's use this second largest one. I have a little water soluble pen here and I'm gonna trace this circle so that it is partially off the surface of my quilt. And that will give us a nice partial circle to begin with. If we had a floating circle like out here, then we wouldn't be able to echo around it without breaking thread. We need something to travel along and that's the edge of our quilt for now. 
Once I have that drawn, I am going to just take my time and stitch around it. Always quilt at a speed that is comfortable for you, where you feel like you are in control. There are no awards for quilting really quickly, so um, no one will ever know how long it took you once you finish your quilt. So maintain control and go as slow as you need to. Once I have quilted around my circle, then I'm gonna travel along the edge of my quilt to establish that quilting distance. Now, in some of my samples, this quilting distance was really small. This is about a quarter, maybe less of an inch between my lines of stitching. This time, I'm going to keep it um, a little bit bigger. I think we're gonna aim for almost an inch echo around this circle. I want a nice, open, squishy amount of quilting. So I'm going to travel along the edge of my quilt until my needle is about an inch away from this quilted line. Now, I don't usually quilt with this much distance between my quilting lines, so this will be a real challenge for me to keep this nice and round and even around this circle. But I'm just gonna keep an eye on the edge of my foot and try to keep it about the same distance from this stitch line as I work around it. That's not too bad. Now that I have finished this first echo, I'm gonna travel in the opposite direction, going this way to establish that about an inch. I don't think this is actually an inch, <laughs> but um, a, that same distance away from this most recent line we just stitched. And then we'll travel back around our circle. Don't be afraid to stop and reposition your hands as often as you need to. If you can set your machine up so that when you stop the needle is down, that will allow you to rearrange your quilt and move your hands without um, creating like long loops with your thread. So now that I have a couple of echoes, I want to start my next circle. I've echoed just twice here since this is pretty large scale, but if I wanted to echo multiple times, I can echo as many times as I want. I'm gonna grab my template again. Now you could freehand these circles or use a template. Um, anything round, here's a little jar of bobbins you could trace around, anything you want. Here's my, my big jar of thread ends. I could trace around anything vaguely circular to give me something to start with. Oh, there's a lot of lint on the bottom of that. When you place your template or begin to stitch your circle, if you are freehanding it, you want to overlap your circle just a little bit with your previous, let's call this circle number one. When you go to draw number two, you want that to be underlapped, I guess. You want it partially hidden behind number one. So this will be number two. To get here, we need to travel along this stitched line, doubling back on what we just stitched to get to the starting point, and then we can start traveling around. This can be a little tricky. Um, I'm working with contrast thread. If you were working with matching thread, this would be a lot more forgiving, but just take your time, move your quilt however you need to to get a nice angle, and slowly move along that line. And now we're ready to stitch around the second circle. I did wander off of my drawn line a little bit, but remember these blue lines are gonna disappear with water, so they will not be visible once your quilting is done. So no one will ever know that you wobbled off a little bit, so don't stress. Just continue a nice smooth curve rather than a jagged one to get back to that line. Now that I have stitched around, remember our rules. You are stitching and echoing circles until you hit either the edge of your quilt or a previously stitched line, and that's what's happened here. So now I am gonna travel 
along this stitched line, just like I did down here along the edge of the quilt to establish that echo distance. I'm about as far as I wanna be from this second circle. Now it's time to circle our way back in an echo. I've hit that stitch line, so I stop. I don't continue my circle. So now we're gonna circle back the other way. Well, that was not the smoothest curve right there, but I am not gonna rip this. Even though I'm using contrasting thread, once this whole thing is done, that little wobble will be not nearly as noticeable. And if you are using matching thread, then it will just blend together and create an all over texture. You won't notice that at all when you're done. So don't stress about those little wobbles. Now I have a decision to make. I can either echo around again, or I could create my next circle. This is where your style and decision making really comes into play. You can have exactly the same number of echoes around each circle. You can vary them. You can place your next circle over here or over here or all the way over here. It's completely up to you and there are no wrong answers. I think that I, I don't like having this little empty space right here. I'd like to get that taken care of. So I think I'm gonna echo around again so that I land over here and then I'm gonna take care of this little area down here. I'm gonna grab my little template. And you could just use this template until you get used to quilting circles, or you could use it for every circle in your quilt, whatever look you are going for. Now here I'm having a circle that's overlapping this number two set, but it's also going off the edge of the quilt. And this is gonna allow me to easily fill in this area and also move along the edge of the quilt to get back out. Now I started my circle and then I went ahead and did the echoes on this side before even finishing the other side of my circle. Just, I was already down here, take care of it before moving on. And then you won't finish your quilt and realize you have a little unquilted area that you have to go back in and fill in. So I like to fill in all those areas as quickly as possible. And that is all there is to this design. I've echoed around my number three circle, and now I need to pick a location for number four. And it could be anywhere, but I think I'm gonna put it right here. Now overlap, you could overlap this as much or as little as you wanted. If you wanted it to be almost a complete circle, then you could place your circle all the way out here, or you could have it just where a little crescent is showing. Whatever your style and whatever you feel looks best to you, I like to overlap mine so that most of my circle is showing. I'm gonna continue quilting these circles and echoes and fill in the rest of this. And then we're gonna take a look at all the variations that we can create from this simple design. If you are working on a stand-up long arm like I am here, then some tips to keep your shapes nice and round are to turn your stitch regulator either to as many stitches per inch as you can reasonably do, or to turn it off altogether, and that will help you get some nice round circles, especially if you are working at a small scale. 
Now, my long arm is pretty heavy and it's hard for me to get nice small round circles until I get warmed up a little bit, but um, I'm doing my best and I am following the same structure as we did on the sit down machine, making a circle, echoing around it and moving along the design. If you can work one-handed with one hand on the work that you are quilting on, then that will really help guide your uh, machine head a little bit smoother and help you get those nice uh, traced stitched over lines. Here is our finished quilted sample and I've removed most of the blue lines. This is a really lovely soft squishy quilting design and at this scale it worked up really quickly. Here is the first sample that I made of this design and the differences are pretty drastic. This has both a larger amount of space between each quilting line. Here that's about a half an inch. Here this is a quarter, maybe less of an inch. And there's also more echoes around each circle on this purple design than there are over here on the yellow. And it changes the look pretty drastically. Here the circles seem like the center is really prominent, whereas here that echo makes the overlapping effect much more drastic. Here's another sample where I changed up the size of the starting circle. I used my little template and I just used different circles to start with. Here's a big one, here's one of the smaller ones, and I just randomly changed up what that center circle was going to be. And this is a really playful, fun version of this design. It also gives a little bit of the effect of these multiple echoes, but since there were some very large starting circles, this worked up a lot more quickly than this one. Here's a version where I started with the same size circle, but I varied the number of echoes around each one. So some of them have just one echo, and then the others have up to maybe, I think there's five or six here, here's four or five. So that variation in the number of echoes can really change the design as well. On this version, it's a little bit like the purple one in that it's tighter quilting, but instead of starting with a circle, I have started with a swirl in the center. And this can be a little bit tricky because you need to keep that swirl pretty tight and close to the line of quilting that you're starting with. So if it would help to draw a circle and then put a swirl inside that circle to keep it nice and tight, then this would be a great option. I've used this swirl variation to also change the distance between the lines of echoes. So I have a little pair that is very close together and then I have a wide space and it really changes the texture and it makes the quilted lines seem a lot more intense. Here's another version where, again, I started with a swirl, but you could easily have the circle in the center. I have quilted it a little bit larger scale than my purple sample, but I have left a larger space close to the outer edge and added a little secondary design in here. Now I have quilted three here, but I would probably pick just one. Here's a figure eight, here's the pebbles, and here's some little back and forth lines. I think this one's my favorite. One of the things I like so much about this concentric swirl design is that it plays so well with many other quilting concepts. So here's a, a little sketchbook style quilting sample that I worked up and I've put a couple of different kinds of swirls into this design to add a little bit more of a neutral background area for these flowers and other designs to really pop. Here's another one where there are multiple swirls and these feathers really come to the forefront when they have this nice neutral background of swirls to pop against. If you are having trouble establishing that nice circular shape when you are quilting, then here are two designs that you might want to revisit. These are both in one of my free motion quilting basics videos. This is Messy Pebbles and I think this is like pebble meander or something like that. I will link the video that both of these are in. And these are, I'm 
to call them messier, but they are less structured than the designs that we've worked on today, which means that you can wobble a little bit. It's less important that your lines of stitching land exactly on top of each other, but they're still really great designs. This is one of my favorite designs ever because this texture is so amazing. But doing one of these two will help you learn that circular motion, that muscle memory, so that when you come back to do something like this, your circles will be nice and a little bit rounder than um, they might be if you're having trouble with this design. So if you start here with this basics design and then move up to the concentric swirl, you can learn this one design and change it up in so many ways and come up with all of these different looks. If you quilted each of these on a quilt, no one would ever realize that you're just tweaking the same design in a couple of different ways. And you can achieve lots of different looks just by developing this one skill. So I hope that gives you a little bit of inspiration, not just for this design, but any design. You can shake it up and come up with many different variations. So until next time, happy quilting.